Um, so why don't we make a start since it's two past the hour. Welcome everyone to this Cradle Seminar. Um, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands on which we are um, meeting today and uh, coming to you all from the lands of the um, Boonwurrung and Wurundji people of the Kulin Nation. Um, I thank Elders past, present and emerging for uh, their care of the land and pay my respects. I'd also like to acknowledge that this week is National Reconciliation Week, which is a time for all Australians to learn about shared histories, cultures and achievements. And the theme for this year is Be a Voice for Generations, um, which is encouraging everyone to be a voice for reconciliation in tangible ways in our everyday lives, where we live, work and socialise. So just a moment to reflect on what we can be doing at this time, particularly in the national context of um, the voice department. So we are very delighted to be here today with um, our guest, Jane Ying Zhan from Hong Kong, um, at the Education University of Hong Kong. Um, she has said that she'll happily spend a little bit more time introducing herself, but we are very interested to hear today about her new work uh, around feedback literacy. So Jane, please. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I'd like to say hello to the audience on Zoom. Uh, I welcome you to my hybrid seminar. You know, it brings me great pleasure to share with you today my recent findings on ecological interpretation of Hong Kong undergraduates perceptions of data literacy. So before I go further, I'd like to uh, introduce myself a little bit because I'm a newcomer um, in the field of feedback in higher education. So I actually have a QR code here. So if you are interested, so you can scan my QR code and see my uh, recent publications on feedback literacy and online peer assessment. So now I'm, I'm thinking um, how to connect feedback literacy with online peer assessment. So this is my uh, you know, research, research direction. Um, additionally, I'm a member of artist. So that is the research cluster, focusing on the assessment research to improve students' learning and teaching within our department at the education University of Hong Kong. So if you scan um, our artist QR code, then you can see our team members assessment related projects and initiatives. And um, you know, our team members and I are eager to seek the collaboration um, opportunities with international researchers in re relation to the assessment for learning, including peer assessment, self-assessment, feedback literacy, and technology-enhanced formative assessment. So welcome you to visit our artist website. So this is a kind of brief introduction. Now let's go back to uh, my today's presentation topic. Actually, the study I share today is a part of my large project, uh, which is uh, entitled as the deal of advantages of peer uh, service teachers, temporal change, interplay, and inferential factors. So this project has been founded by uh, the early career scheme um, in Hong Kong. Um, we started this project in January last year and it's still um, you know, uh, ongoing. Now, my presentation uh, actually has three parts. The first part is about understanding of feedback literacy. So in this part, I will analyze scholars' perspectives of feedback literacy and also review the limited number of empirical studies which have examined students' perspectives of feedback literacy. And second part is about our theoretical underpinnings um, of the study. Uh, specifically ecological perspectives of feedback literacy. And the last part is our main part, that is uh, um, about our uh, research design and also the findings. Okay, now let's go to the first part. So, understanding of feedback literacy. So I'd like to propose a question for you to think about why feedback literacy is important. Uh, actually, more and more researchers have realized that and students only truly 
benefit from the FIBA process when they possess adequate FIBA literacy. So some scholars have uh, um, summarized the impacts of FIBA literacy on students' learning and their career development. Here I'd like to uh, coach Winston Elto's um, uh, study. Um, they, they actually um, talk about the short-term impact of FIBA literacy, that is to enable students to make better use of existing FIBA opportunities within the university curricula and assessment policies. So in long term, the FIBA literacy can also enable the students to develop their evaluative judgment and you know, engage more effectively in the workplaces. So FIBA literacy is very important, but what exactly is FIBA literacy? So I think the concept of FIBA literacy actually is quite related to the feedback paradigm shift. So rather than being teacher-centered transmission of feedback, the focus has shifted to a more student-focused and you know, process-oriented approaches. So this new perspective of feedback we use the feedback as process in which the students are proactively, you know, are proactively is making, uh, in seeking, making sense of, and utilizing the comments of others on their um, learning performance and learning approaches. So, as a result of the uh, feedback paradigm shift to regard this new construct, feedback literacy, here I summarize some scholars' definitions of feedback literacy. A certain might be the uh, first person to explicitly define the feedback literacy as the student's ability to comprehend and use feedback. Now, based on um, the subject's definition, uh, Carlos and Bouch expand that into students' um, outstanding capacities and the dispositions needed to make sense of information and use it to enhance work or learning strategies. So here also we get the uh, Maloyes, um, Elto's uh, definitions of feedback literacy. They frame feedback literacy by focusing on students' ability to understand, utilize, and benefit from feedback processes. Um, and also Hannah Shi, uh, regard feedback literacy as the cognitive and social effective readiness of students to engage with feedback. So these definitions highlight the importance of uh, identification of concrete feedback competencies and dispositions that students need to, you know, make feedback more beneficial for learning. So here I list out um, some scholars' arguments on feedback literacy in a very general way. So uh, Tai Elto, uh, you know, uh, they believe that evaluative judgment is an essential skill for undergraduates to actively engage with feedback. And also uh, similarly, Carlson Bot uh, thought that uh, being, um, you know, the student, uh, being a feedback literate student, students need to have a very good evaluative judgment skills. Besides that, the students should be able to manage their effect when they uh, confronted with the critical um, uh, comments from others, and also they need to possess a variety of strategies to follow up on the feedback productively. And the Charles model of feedback literacy actually echoed these attributes, used the categories like cognitive engagement, emotional engagement, and behavioral engagement. And also, you know, uh, referring specifically uh, to the feedback literacy in academic writing, Yu and Ryu described the feedback literacy students as those who can decode the context specific writing comments and manage their emotions when receiving uh, critical and practical complex feedback. And also, uh, the students need to have uh, some reasoning and critical uh, thinking skills to make evaluations and use feedback effectively. And also with time, the researchers have realized that the distinctive competences are actually required at different stages of feedback process. Here I would like to use uh, Malacca's um, 
process of feedback that is seeking, processing, and enacting to elaborate on some uh, specific uh, feedback competences at each stage. So at the very beginning of the feedback process, the students uh, needed to uh, you know, acquire the monetary inquiry uh, strategies to seek information from different sources to adjust any uncertainties and problems regarding to the assessment criteria and the quality of their work. And after that, they received the feedback they need to uh, adequately uh, understand the, the, the comments against the assessment criteria and also, um, you know, extract the key information for subsequent action taking. And also to close the feedback loop, I, uh, the students need to uh, be equipped with a um, repertoire of strategies, specifically self-regulated strategies alike goal setting, planning, and monitoring. So these are the specification of feedback competencies corresponding to each stage of the feedback process. Now recently, recently um, researchers, um, a few researchers identified the emotional resistance as a factor which prevents the students from actively engaging with feedback. So, um, the students are needed to equip with adequate feedback dispositions to um, be actively uh, engaged with the feedback process. So currently, in about, um, they sought uh, the students' appre appreciation of feedback values and the students' active roles in the feedback process are very important. And some researchers also mentioned that students should be able to uh, open-minded and the welcoming of others' criticism and uh, critical comments. And moreover, some researchers uh, highlight the importance of uh, strong willpower to overcome the difficulties and find extra support and resources to follow up on uh, others' uh, comments in the revision. So these feedback dispositions um, are necessary for the students to overcome the emotional barriers and also to derive the maximum effectiveness of feedback on knowledge. So these are the theoretical arguments on feedback competences and uh, dispositions. The next, I'd like to share some limited number of studies on students' points of view of feedback literacy. So the first study is about the Nobel Tales uh, study. So uh, they explored the feedback literacy of healthcare students at an Australian teaching hospital. They identified that the students' active role in the workplace uh, really helped the, the, the students, um, you know, actually engage with the workplace feedback. And also they identify some strategies like feedback seeking, self-evaluation, and synthesizing the complex and contested comments are essential skills for the students and, you know, have a success in their workplace. And Moloi Eltu, they used the survey interviews directly to, uh, to understand students' perspectives of feedback literacy. So they conclude that uh, to use feedback effect effectively, students should, you know, have a very good uh, seeking, uh, seeking strategies and also need to make a good uh, evaluative judgment and also recognize feedback process as a reciprocal process. Now here I also like to briefly introduce my recent study about um, the obstacles that Hong Kong undergraduates encountered in their peer assessment process. Actually, I framed their as uh, obstacles in the specific needs for feedback literacy development. So I identified the students need to develop their evaluative judgment and, and self-regulated strategies and also feedback resilience 
to you know overcome the obstacles that they match in that peer assessment. So these limited studies actually give us very insightful um, perspectives and uh, views on uh, how how the, the students look at, look into the feedback literacy. So to summarize, um, the prevailing discussion on feedback literacy is mainly conceptual and uh, approaches the scholar's perspectives on the matter. But we know that there might be a differences between the scholar's perspectives and students' perspectives regarding feedback and feedback literacy. So this has been already um, you know, documented in the literature. So therefore, it's very necessary for us to identify students' needs in a knowledge-centered feedback process, right? So um, we, we, we need to explore what students themselves think of their feedback literacy. And also just now I mentioned a limited empirical studies which have explored students' perspectives of feedback literacy. However, uh, these studies have kind of limitations. I'd like to take my study as example. We know I actually indirectly explored students' perspectives of feedback literacy through the lens of their uh, feedback experiences in the peer assessment process. So amidst that, we need to collect more and uh, direct uh, data to uh, looking to the students' understanding, their perceptions of feedback literacy. Now let's go to uh, the second part, that is the ecological interpretation of feedback literacy. Um, here I'd like to start in a broad way. So when we study students' perceptions, we always think students' perceptions are context-specific and have ecological rationality. So according to our risk camp environment, the people's reasoning actually is shaped by their adaptation to their environment. When we consider students' perceptions of feedback literacy, I think it might be the same case. Now here I'd like to uh, quote some scholars' uh, ecological interpretation of feedback literacy. I think maybe um, we are quite familiar with the choice model, choice uh, ecological uh, model of feedback literacy. Um, he considered the in, how the interaction between the individuals and context contribute to the effective feedback engagement. So he categorized the contextual factors into four levels, uh, like textual, interpersonal, instructional, and social cultural. And also the individual factors included students' beliefs, goals, prior experiences, feedback, and abilities. And Nimina also framed feedback literacy as ecological agency. So in order to have a deep understanding of students' feedback literacy, we need to explore the individual's temporal, physical, and social cultural contexts. So when we interpret how the students react to the feedback, so we need to think about um, their prior, feedback experiences, like what we discussed in the morning, feedback history, right? And also we need to think about uh, their expectations of what would work and also their awareness of what is acceptable and also appropriate in the immediate environment, right? So only uh, Nobel, I have to, they actually provide an empirical evidence to support the notions that students' feedback experiences and their situated knowledge of the workplace influence their perceptions of their roles they ought to play in the feedback process and how they handle the feedback. But they haven't explored whether social cultural context really matter uh, when they you know, formulate their conceptions, their beliefs of feedback literacy. So there is still a need to collect more empirical data to understand students' beliefs of feedback literacy in a very specific social culture context. So you know my study was conducted in Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is a context uh, with a very strong 
Confucian heritage culture. So in my study, my participants mentioned two important cultural values, and they are humility and committed effort. So here I'd like to explain these two important cultural values a little bit more. So Confucius believes that humility actually is essential um, in the journey towards the self-perfection. So, you know, uh, our Chinese people believe that the ultimate goal of education is to become a full person, which involves develops, develops the seven virtues, right? So humility can help us to avoid arrogance and, and also help us to foster the caution, empathy, and openness to different perspectives. So you can find a lot of sayings in an uh, uh, Analects of Confucius. So here I would like to share some examples with you. So I, I, I will talk about uh, one example, quite famous. Uh, it means that when three people um, uh, working together, there uh, is always something I can learn from them. So this is a kind of humanity, okay? And also Confucius believes that you know, the journey towards the self-perfection is quite challenging. It's full of uh, a disappointment, the, the temptations, difficulties. So uh, we need to have a very great effort to overcome these challenges. Um, so, you know, Chinese people often attribute their success to effort instead of intelligence. So this is a kind of... Uh, inherent, you know, beliefs of not me. So here I'd like to give you two examples from an analysis. So one example is, uh, It means that uh, devote yourself to hard work and forget about food, be happy and forget about your berries, not knowing that old age is coming. So quite hardworking and forget about time, <laughs> yeah. So this is about the, the confusion, you know, heritage culture values, which might be influenced the Chinese students and many beliefs and non behaviors. Okay, I'd like to uh, stop here and jump to our study. So here I'd like to you know, briefly to introduce our participants to you. Uh, you know, uh, our study was conducted in a leading teacher education university in Hong Kong, which trains uh, 80 percentages of uh, uh, kindergarten and primary school pre-service teachers and 30 percentages of secondary pre-service teachers. And, um, you know, we have these five-year teacher education programs. So um, in these five-year uh, teacher education programs, we have four domains of NANI. Um, they are um, subject NANI, the, the elective courses, and uh, uh, practicum, and also educational studies courses. So in the programs, the students enjoy the flexibility of uh, their uh, choosing their learning schedule and also a wide range of course options and also they have a, a, a number of opportunities to gain feedback from teachers, school mentors, peers um, about their assignments, their practicum, their presentation and also the projects. So uh, in our study we involved participants in an elective course that is called assessment for productive learning. Um, we got 42 students, we sent an invitation to all the students, only 15 of them um, you know, consented to uh, participate in our study. So you can see the participants varied in terms of their gender, their grade, and their major. Here I'd like to draw your attention is a uh, majority of the participants are in the later stage of their teacher education program. And the, how about the data collection? So uh, the first thing we do is we, we, uh, we invite the 50 participants to draw mind maps. 
on their understanding of what is feedback literacy. So while they drew their map, we give the guiding questions for them to think about. So what competencies and uh, attitudes uh, should you have to make good use of others' feedback in your teacher education program to improve your knowledge? Something like this. So they actually had the flexibility in choosing their drawing mode. So okay, they can draw the map map by hand and also draw it digitally. Mm -hmm. So you can see the two examples here. Um, uh, one uh, was drawn by uh, male students and one was drawn by female students. Uh, they also got some similarities. So you can see this. So it's uh, like a vector, uh, you know, web-like structure with nodes and branches uh, radiating out from the central uh, concept of student feedback literacy. Okay. And then um, a, a week later, so we invite them again and to attend the, the individual interviews while Zoom, because Zoom uh, has the, the screen sharing functions. So we will share the, the screen with our uh, mind map and ask them questions. So the interviews serve two purposes. One purpose is to try to testify uh, or, or explore their understanding of feedback literacy. So they can explain the notes and also edit their notes and uh, also you, you know, revise it and add a new one. And also another most important purpose is to know how they came up with this mind map. So this is our uh, key concern. And the data analysis, we use a semantic analysis to uh, analyze the data to, uh, because we think uh, semantic analysis has a flexibility and a great pressure, a great potential in generating the patterns in nature and also you know, produce some unexpected data ideas. Now, I'd like to uh, share our findings with you. So I, I actually present the findings in this table. Um, actually, you may notice that I use some numbers, but these numbers, uh, you know, uh, don't have any statistical meaning. It's just to give you a brief overview of what we obtained from the participants. So you can see, um, uh, generally, the students perceived more competencies related to eliciting and processing feedback than the competencies related to the inactive. And also, more than Half of the participants, um, you know, were aware of the, the feedback dispositions, their attitudes towards the feedback. Now, I'd like to zoom in and give you more detailed explanations of for each type of competencies, enlisting competencies. So nine participants um, mentioned uh, to be feedback literate, um, the students need to purposefully requesting other specific comments. So they thought good questioning strategies were very important and also uh, can help them gain the high quality feedback from others. And uh, seven participants believe that it was not straightforward to know about the, the criteria regarding the quality of the work because um, some incomplete or weak information they gain from the teachers. So this requires them to have a very good conversation skills and observation skills to uh, talk with the teachers and peers and also observe how others perform the task and what kind of feedback they get. So to interpret the assessment criteria. And also uh, five persons mentioned um, it was very important for them to search for examples and assessment information from different sources. Here I give you an example, it's about a graduate student's example. So she said in the final year, uh, she searched for good examples of graduation thesis in the university library database. So she, she thought this experience make them make, make her to think about the importance of uh, finding the good examples to interpret the assessment criteria proposed by the teacher. And also five participants mentioned uh, the reflective self-evaluation before asking 
uh, others' feedback was also very important. So this could be uh, could be uh, helpful for them to gain the baseline data and also find the uh, possible problems, ways to work, and ask for their specific comments. Now let's go to the, the second stage of feedback, that is the processing uh, stage. So uh, in this stage, the students uh, mentioned about the strategies of comprehensively understanding others' comments. So it's very interesting because they saw this comprehensive understanding uh, involved not only, you know, interpret languages used in the feedback from teachers and peers, but also um, to interpret the different perspectives and standpoints behind the comments. So it's just like I got the, the hidden meaning between the lines. It's very important. And also uh, 11 participants uh, mentioned the evaluative judgment skills of, of very important for the students. Because uh, like participants three said, some judgment could enable them to selectively accept and reject others' comments and avoid feeling uh, you know, confused when receiving conflicting comments from different people. And last but not least, each participant's mentioned that analyzing our strategies were also quite important for them to digest the, the feedback from different sources. Um, otherwise, they might be overwhelmed by the, the multiple you know, comments from different sources and felt too anxious to handle the comments. Compared with the competences relate to eliciting and processing, uh, the fewer students mentioned the competences relate to enacting feedback. So five participants mentioned it could be very uh, crucial for them to make action plans for revision. Otherwise, um, the feedback would be in vain for them. So um, this is the uh, planning strategies they mentioned, and also three participants mentioned monitoring the revision process was also important because they regard the revision process uh, was not one-off event, it's actually a continuous process. Uh, if you want to achieve continuous improvement, you have to, you know, uh, check, reflect, then do again. And also three participants mentioned the time management strategies for the timely revision. So they need to think about how to set up their timetable for revision and also, you know, uh, to think about priorities in revision. Okay, so much for the conceptions of feedback competences. Let's go to conceptual skills and conceptions of feedback dispositions. So when being asked about their attitudes towards feedback, um, the students use the humble, modest, respectful, and open-minded to describe their uh, modest uh, attitudes towards the feedback. And also, 11 participants actually emphasize the active roles in the feedback process, which can't relate to their understanding of self-regulated learning and learning uh, autonomy in the university setting. And also, uh, eight participants um, I mentioned, um, it could be very crucial for them to have a, a committed effort and try to overcome the difficulties and uh, laziness, for example, in their uh, revision. And also nine participants mentioned uh, the feedback values. So they summarized the feedback values in four ways. They are identifying the weaknesses of learning, improving learning, learning from others, and enhancing uh, self-reflection. So you can notice that these uh, feedback values are quite formative, targeting the student's future learning instead of their past learning. So, so how they came up with these ideas about feedback literacy? So we identified four types of factors. The first um, major factor is the Chinese cultural values. So we identify very interesting a relationship between the Chinese cultural values and the students' dispositions to best uh, feedback. 
especially their modest attitudes and their recognition of committed effort in the revision. So you can see the quote, uh, quotations here. Yeah. So like the uh, participant 15 said, uh, modest helps one to go forward, whereas conceit makes one left behind. So these are kind of learning beliefs inherited by the Chinese students under the influence of the Confucian heritage culture. And also we got similar uh, sayings about uh, uh, committed effort, like uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, diligence is the path to the mountain of knowledge and uh, being hardworking is a boat to the endless sea of knowledge. Yeah, so this is what they thought. And also, we identified that university learning setting was closely related to the students' awareness of their active roles in the feedback process and their highlights of um, you know, enlisting skills. So they, uh, some students observed the big class. Uh, just now I mentioned uh, 42 students in one class is quite typical for the participating uh, university. So, um, we even have a bigger class, uh, like one lecture may teach more than 100 students. So big class caused the large social gaps between teachers and their students, okay? So the teachers might not, you know, understand quite well about the specific feedback needs of students, of individual students, otherwise, uh, unless these students approach to them to mm -hmm. ask for help. And another uh, setting, um, Factor is about uh, the, the students' awareness of the requirement of autonomous learning, uh, quite different in the university. So uh, in the university, they enjoy more freedom uh, to uh, you know, make their learning schedules and choose their work, uh, their course. Um, but this, you know, in turn requires more uh, autonomous learning. So this, actually, uh, you know, push them to think about their roles of, um, you know, they, they need to take in the feedback process and uh, they need to take more responsibilities in the feedback process. And also we identified the prior feedback experiences in the course learning will quite relate to the students' conceptions of feedback competencies and their uh, understanding of feedback values. So students mentioned their positive feedback experiences, negative feedback experiences, and also their learning experiences. So when, uh, when they you know, drew their mind maps, and uh, they told me that they recall back the times, uh, dating back uh, you know, their times as uh, school pupils. Um, so the prior feedback experiences are quite important. So they can, uh, you know, think about, reflect on uh, why these feedback experiences actually make me, uh, you know, learn, uh, learn more things. So, and why these unpleasant feedback experiences uh, make me don't want to learn more. So they do some kind of reflections and then try to put these reflections in their mind maps, okay? And the learning experiences is quite related to, uh, you know, uh, their understanding of, of feedback values. Uh, just now I mentioned our, our participants are uh, pre-service teachers. So they got uh, chances to exposed to the, the knowledge regarding uh, assessment and feedback. So they, they thought their learning experiences in the pedagogy courses and in the math courses enhanced their understandings of the values of feedback on learning and also how they, how they can you know, make good use of feedback. Okay, let's go to the discussion part. So in the discussion part, I'd like to compare the students' perspectives of feedback literacy with the scholars' perspectives of feedback literacy and also pose some questions for later discussion, okay? Um, you know, my uh, study actually uh, contributed to our study of feedback literacy from insiders instead of outsiders' perspectives. So after we uh, do the uh, 
uh, analysis. So we found that most of our findings echo back the scholars' perspectives regarding uh, Quebec literacy. Uh, for example, uh, in our study, uh, the most of participants uh, believe that evaluating judgment uh, was the, the, the essential uh, skill for them to process feedback effectively. So this can, uh, can find evidence in uh, Thai elders and also participants of uh, their work. And another example is about the eliciting competencies. Um, so yes, in our study, we found participants have similar understanding of eliciting, uh, like uh, as described by the Malefic L2 study, but it also got their specificity. Uh, for example, they believe that eliciting competences, including the skills of asking, cue seeking, and searching, and self-evaluation. The interesting finding is we, we found relatively um, few participants mentioned the competences related to inactive feedback. So I wonder why. Um, is it because they have less experience of inactive feedback or it means they actually don't care about how to enact <clears throat> it? So for them, just uh, after receiving the feedback, that's enough. So I don't know. So I think that this is open for discussion. Yeah. And also um, in our uh, study, we revealed that the contextual and individual factors shape the students' perceptions of feedback literacy. So it provides the empirical evidence to demonstrate that feedback literacy as an ecological agency. So we propose the two causal relationships uh, based on our observation. So we, th we thought that social cultural factors largely influence students' perceived uh, dispositions to best feedback, and also learners' prior experiences with feedback or non-experiences man mainly predict how learner react to feedback. But these are our assumptions. So we actually do you know, large-scale survey study to verify these assumptions. Now, further directions, um, I'd like to um, reflect on our study and uh, actually our study have some limitations. So just now I mentioned uh, our participants uh, were in the late stage of their teacher education program and also they are, uh, are pre-service teachers, right? So they may have a great exposure to the assessment knowledge and feedback knowledge, and also tend to be more motivated to understand feedback than non-education majors, right? And also some studies also point out senior students are more feedback literate than the junior counterparts. So, so we think um, the, the students' perceptions of feedback literacy revealed by our studies might not represent the perceptions of the students in, in the you know, large population in higher education. So this is why I think a comparative study uh, you know, might be done on students' conceptions of feedback literacy among freshmen, uh, sophomore, juniors, and seniors, or between non-education majors and education majors. So this is the, the first uh, um, thing we think about. And another thing is, so in our study, we, we identified that the social cultural factors uh, might influence the students' perceptions of feedback literacy. So our study could be regarded as a starting point to do the cross-cultural studies on students' per perceptions of feedback literacy. Uh, for example, um, because uh, in our study, we found that students uh, from the Chinese context are very more about community committed uh, effort. So we wonder uh, whether this is the same phenomenon across cultures or it may that the Chinese people actually are better at this. We don't know, so we can do the comparative study later. And another, another comparative study uh, I, I think of is, 
you know, we explored the student's perception so for feedback literacy, but we don't know teachers' expectations of student feedback literacy, whether there is a gap between the students' perspectives and teachers' perspectives. If there is, how to close the gap? I think it is very important because if we want to cultivate more feedback literacy students, we need to identify the gap. Yeah. And the last one, I think is a kind of, um, um, you know, uh, methodologic, uh, you know, thinking. You know, so far uh, we have done a, a number of qualitative studies on the benefits states. So it might be possible for us to expand the skill to do uh, some quantitative studies or maybe some mixed method explorations to generalize what we found from the qualitative studies. Yeah, so that's the end of my presentation. These are the references I used in their presentation. And I'd like to conclude my presentation with this beautiful picture that is the panda, our national treasure. And I hope you enjoy my seminar. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, for those people online, I'm sorry, I did not do the housekeeping well. Um, I did mention in the chat, if you've got questions for Jane, please add them to the Q&A function on the chat. Um, you can see a few more of us in the room now. Um, and you can upvote the questions that you really like so that they are the ones that will be answered given that um, we will formally close in about 10 minutes and then we might extend the discussion a bit further because I think there are probably a lot of questions around. Um, so I might invite one of the students in the room to ask a question first. I know Amina's pop up her hand. Thank you so much, Jane. My question was is with regards to if you could speak more to your slide on processing, and there was something about students in the hidden. Um, like the hidden messages. Yes. And I was wondering if you could speak about how that may um, be different or what the impacts are for students who may be neurodivergent, where the hidden messaging might not be as easy to, like where the, I guess the more tacit, like overt messages might be more important. Um, actually, yes, um, because uh, my participants believe that uh, if you, don't know the hidden messages, just literally to interpret the messages from the teachers, I might get in the wrong way. So, so this is why they think, um, you know, the hidden message is very important. And also um, some, some perspective standpoints is uh, a hidden, uh, you know, from the words, right? So, um, this actually makes them the well that different people have different opinions towards the, the issue. So this is quite for them, uh, help for them to understand the work performance from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So they think this is, is the beneficial for their learning in the long term. Okay. Yeah, but yes, but they think this is quite challenging. So this is why they think if you want to make good use of feedback, you have to know about the hidden message. Um, I might swap to one very popular question online from David Carlos. Um, and I think a lot of, uh, there are a few other questions uh, around this issue. Um, is there any Confucian influence that might encourage learners to prioritize eliciting and processing over enacting? Or maybe enacting feedback is more challenging and more work for most learners, irrespective of cultural background. So, yes. so it means that uh, so the cultural values can encourage students in acting. Or no. I think rather that David is asking perhaps is, that, is the Confucian see. influence um, part of the reason why eliciting and processing might be more um, oh, oh over in act why yeah. right. Uh, actually, when I talk about the students' perceptions of eliciting uh, competences, this is quite related to uh, their university learning settings. They, they don't mention uh, this is about the cultural issues, right? So, um, so I don't think uh, the culture will encourage students to elicit 
or, or you know, process the, the information um, than the enacting the feedback. Yeah. So in my study, just my study, okay, so I cannot generalize my findings. Um, the students mentioned, um, you know, the participant mentioned that the culture actually affected their attitudes towards the, mm -hmm. the feedback instead of their uh, strategies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the strategies are quite, their perceptions of strategies are quite related to their feedback history, their experiences and their course learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, just as a sort of follow up to that about the uh, students didn't focus on enacting feedback. Mm -hmm. Your study was a study of conceptions of feedback literacy, but a student's conception of feedback literacy depends on their conception of feedback. Yes. So if they've got a limited notion of feedback, mm -hmm. which focuses on inputs and process of inputs rather oh. than in action, then surely you're going to find a shortage of uh, emphasis on um, an action yeah, feedback. Action. So okay. the question I'm asking is, in a study of the conceptions of feedback literacy, shouldn't we first look at students' conceptions of feedback mm -hmm. and to see whether they're rooted in an old paradigm yeah, yes. view or a new paradigm view? Yes, you're right. So it means that if the students, Chinese students, regard to the feedback as the, you know, one of the transmission mm -hmm. of information from teachers and students, and it means that, okay, so I receive, that's enough, then they will not do uh, or follow up on the feedback. But also, I think it could be uh, quite related to, you know, the students' uh, opportunities of revising their work. Mm -hmm. Normally, uh, you know, in the higher education, we receive the feedback at the end. Mm -hmm. Right, so we don't have a chance to, you know, to to put others' uh, comments in our revision because we revise no one read it, right? So it might be so we inhibit readers. the process. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna ask a similar question to Dave, and to follow that up. Mm, if we're asking students about their feedback, their con yeah, their conceptions of feedback literacy, they might be going into what they think is feedback. They may or may not be enacting it, but that wasn't necessarily the question that was asked from them. Could you remind me if I missed it, what was the question that was asked from students in the, in the study when they received when they needed to do the mind map? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't give a very specific question mm -hmm. for them because I don't want to restrict their thoughts on yeah. feedback literacy, try to make the in, uh, intervention limited. So I don't ask them to, okay, after you receive the feedback, so what, what, what you should do, something like this. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of general questions. So actually, this reflects, um, you know, their understanding of feedback literacy. So when they think about the, the competencies and the attitude they, they need to, uh, you know, uh, to cope with the feedback, they just the sort of this. They haven't, uh, you know, not, not, not quite a number of students mentioned the competencies related to the mm -hmm. active feedback. But we know, actually, we definitely need some competencies to follow up. Yeah. Mm. So the question was in terms of what are the competencies? Yeah, what are the competencies? Needed? So you know, very general. Yeah. yeah. I can see we've got a lot more questions to discuss, but before the hour is up, because I know some people will have to leave us, I'd like to formally thank Jane. Uh, let you all know about some upcoming webinars, seminar webinars that we are doing. Firstly, the next texture event on, will be on June the 5th on the impact of chat GBT on higher education. What have we learned? I've just popped that link in the chat. And the next Cradle seminar series uh, is on the 12th of July, and that will be on authentic assessment um, in undergraduate science uh, from a critical realist perspective. So I've just popped those two links in the chat, and we hope you can join us next time if you're leaving us now. Um, so thank you. Um, but now back to more questions. Um, and I think, Jane, this, this next one relates back to the, uh, um, 
the idea you proposed around looking at student and teacher expectations and feedback literacy together. So GWC, I'm sorry, not not sure who they are, asked what are the basic requirements for teachers and markers to write clear and accessible feedback for students. Um, so we know that there's a lot of unclear or vague feedback. So I guess extending from this, did you did you get a sense of what types of feedback students were hoping working with, working on? Yes, um, actually, um, I also, um, not, not, not in this study, so actually I communicate with my as students, I think it's quite individualized um, because, you know, uh, some, some students, you know, in, in my other studies, some students like um, you propose some directions, options for me to think about. So I, 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 I should say this type of students are quite, uh, you know, motivated to learn more mm -hmm. and want to explore more. So if they don't want you to you know, constrain their thoughts, just to give me some possibilities so that I need to explore. So this kind of uh, feedback uh, welcoming for, uh, uh, by them, but uh, for some students, um, I think um, they may have an instrumental motivation. So what they like to know is, what are specific solutions to make my assignments feel better? Yeah, so, so they want you to give the step-by-step -step, uh, advice to revise their work. Um, so according to my observation and investigation, I, I often think that students' learning motivation uh, really matters when they uh, you know, look at the teacher's uh, feedback and uh, think about the usefulness of uh, teacher's feedback. May I ask a, a bit provocative question as well, that maybe sometimes we are part of the problem, uh, not the solution, because you also mentioned that feedback is coming very late in the learning process. Mm -hmm. So, and I find out that we are uh, researching and assessing assessment and feedback sometimes separately. Can we actually combine that and actually have feedback embedded in the assessment process? I'm quite interested, what is your view, how we can actually enhance that uh, feedback literacy through the assessment process, not to come to the end, but actually oh, to yes. have a couple of milestones, you know, and they have opportunity to, yeah, to yes. enact uh, feedback. Yes, uh, actually, uh, I think, um, this is about, first is about assessment design. So if you have a, a, a chain of assessment tasks and uh, after they, you know, finish each assessment task, you give it back and then they can use that to refine and then also transfer that comments to the next assessment task. It could be very helpful. So this is the way. Uh, we call it continuous assessment. Yes, in the continuous assessment, you carefully design on the, the, the assessment to try to, this, to make the students see the specific linkage among different types of assessment tasks. So this is one way we do. And uh, the second way we do uh, that is you can ask the students to do the group work uh, so it's a kind, it's not a, a you know, a, a sign, written assignments or a test, it's actually a, a project, okay? So during the process of project, the, the teachers can uh, give, uh, you know, the feedback uh, in each stage of uh, projects. Actually, I have done the study related to this. So the teachers will give the, you know, audio feedback on each stage. Mm -hmm of the project. And the students have to listen because this is quite related to the final result, mm -hmm. the presentation. So is there improvement in feedback literacy in that instance? Um, because when I study them, we, uh, we don't focus on feedback literacy. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I think quite, uh, you know, have a, a close relationship sure. with uh, feedback mm -hmm. literacy, yeah. Thank you. Speaking of relationships, I was wondering if you can speak to the role of relationships in both student and perhaps even teacher feedback. Uh, teacher feedback literacy. Oh, and student. And student feedback literacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it's, uh, 
you know, they are closely related. Yes, and uh, you, you know, uh, the teacher, if the teacher have very good feedback literacy, uh, they can create, you know, conducive environments for the students uptake their comments. They know uh, what kind of feedback would, uh, you know, take effect for the, their students, right? So Sorry, I think I worded my question weird. Mm -hmm. I meant to ask um, about like relation, like relationality and trust between the student and teacher uh -huh. and students' feedback literacy. Oh, I, I, I know what I mean, the trust in teacher and in peers, how this trust can affect their feedback literacy development, right? Yeah. Mm, I think we actually have done a, a, a quantitative study on, it's quite related to what you say, a trust. So, you know, the Chinese people are trusting teachers, right? So we identify if the students trust teachers, they more likely to listen to teachers' advice, right? Mm -hmm. So this might help them to process uh, the feedback and uh, and, uh, and also absorb their feedback in their action. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of things. But if you blindly trust your teachers, it might not be good, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, actually, it's very interesting. Uh, when I interact with the students, the students tell me, um, at least I need to incorporate something of, from my teachers as a token of uh, respect. Mm -hmm. It means that I, I really listen to you, okay? because the teachers, you know, as a judge of their work. So, yeah. But in my, I don't know that, that, that the relationship is whether this is, a, is a facilitating or inhibiting mm. the feedback literacy much. Yeah. I have a question. Um, so this study was on what they, so what capabilities they think are needed for feedback. Yes. Is there an observation or a follow-up study on what capabilities they actually have or they actually practice? Yeah, Hopefully actually, enough. this is a very good question. Yes, this is their perceptions, but what re they really do, there might be the gap between their perceptions of feedback literacy and their actual practice of feedback. Yes, we haven't done uh, the observation and uh, so do the follow-up, but I think this is a very uh, interesting direction to do, yes. So we do you have a few more questions online? Firstly, um, I think I'm going to combine a couple, but I want to mention that Christy Noble of Noble at Al says thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Um, she asks if you have any thoughts on how we might further develop students' feedback literacy. But there's another question around the research methods from Eleanor Hoare, mm -hmm. which asks, I'm interested in how you got students to get started on their mind maps, but also could the way that your approaches have influenced their responses? And then I wondered mm -hmm. if um, mind mapping might be another way to start developing students' mm -hmm. conceptions of feedback. So, um, because, you know, uh, the participants enrolled in the assessment course, uh, that is uh, assessment for productive learning. So feedback uh, is one of the topic uh, they will learn. So before they learn this topic, Actually, I'd like to know their understanding. So their learning motivation is a kind of a trigger for them to think mm -hmm. of the topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th this is why I, I can ask them to do this, but not all the students do this. Yes, and they, and so I think, so just now I mentioned, these students may have a higher motivation to understand mm -hmm. feedback, yeah. Um, and another question from online. Did your students find it difficult due to the Confucian culture or otherwise to give feedback to others because of their fear of perhaps hurting other people? Um, and Imelda Ghazali says, it seems to be a major issue with my students, even after a semester of feedback training. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, um, uh, actually, well, I, so this is also the limitations about my study. When I ask the students to draw up their mind maps, they just think about 
uh, there were also feedback this receiver as a receiver. Mm -hmm. So you uh, so what what competences dispositions you should have, um, so to make good use of others' feedback. So it means that they they put them in the position of a feedback receiver. Just you mentioned as a, a kind of the a feedback give it mm -hmm. right so um in my other study uh we actually explored the the trust uh, in peers mm -hmm. whether uh the, the students trusting their peers would affect their you know process of uh, peer comments and uh, mm -hmm. also uh, whether they will think about this could be hurt their relationships mm -hmm. Definitely yes, mm -hmm. yes. We we identify mm -hmm. uh, Chinese people more aware about the relationship. Um, they don't want to openly criticize someone because it will make them lose face. This is the face phenomena in 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 China. Um, but also, uh, you know, I can say. Um, this program and uh, so when they uh, do the the peer assessment um they actually will pay more attention to politeness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. how to express that's like what you said yeah. this morning how to express my uh comments in a more you know mild way mm -hmm. and let people listen to me so politeness is quite important uh, for the Chinese people when they conduct the peer assessment. And also, um, they also don't, sometimes they don't want to tell the truth. Yeah, just, uh, this is also I, I found it very interesting. They pick up some tiny things to criticize. So when, when they... This is a very common <laughs> this phenomenon. Is, yeah, I think it's just yeah, yeah. So, so because they don't want to hurt others' emotions. Yeah, so this is what we need to discuss. So this is the global phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> Pick up the tiny things and don't touch deep, just the surface. Yeah. And is that, it, um, I'm thinking of the of previous studies where the peer assessment was uh, contributed to the final marks. So students were thinking not only um, I shouldn't be hurtful of other people, but I know this counts for somebody else's mark. Mm -hmm. So I want to give them a good mark because I want them to give me a good oh, mark. Oh, it's just yeah. like, uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's one of the arguments undermines the use of peer assessment for grades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for grades. I, I, so in, in, my, in my teaching, I don't use the peer assessment for grading. Mm. Because that's you know doesn't work. No, yeah. it's very problematic. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions from the room? I have one. Um, my my um question is um yeah it's it's a little bit around the cultural and the subjectivity. So so if you're asking people for conceptions of ideal conceptions, uh, yeah, then you must go for. I culturally ideal behaviors that would make sense. Yes. So you would. So I guess um, I, I I wonder, and I wonder how much of that is performative. Mm. And this is, speaks to someone who has a Chinese mother and so has mm. had the joys of. That's why I giggled when I saw modesty and discipline <laughs> and had diligence and hard work because yeah. I know those mantras. Mm. I know them very well. And 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 I also know a little bit that you also perform them. I mean. And, and I'm sure you'd be aware of this as well, too. You must appear modest. What you know in your heart mm -hmm. is, is another question. So I was wondering as well about the performances when you go for these idealised behaviours. Is there not also an element of, you know, performance going on? People, people saying what they should mm -hmm. be doing um, and what, yeah. So people say what they should do, yeah. Is maybe not really what they do in the reality, and also that it's very that 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 ideal stuff is particularly prone to cultural interpretation. Yeah, this yeah. is the cultural mm -hmm. interpretation because uh, just now you mentioned it's the idea, yeah, ideal words, and this is uh, the values we promote yeah, yeah, yeah. in the culture. So, um, so there are a lot of books to 
to advocate if you are modest, then you can benefit a, a lot uh, from, uh, you know, others. Um, so I said this is about education, moral education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when, when you want to, uh, to look into the students' perceptions, you, you need to think about what education they receive since childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a kind of a accumulated uh, perceptions uh, based on uh, they learn from teachers, parents, and uh, the relatives, and also the public media and the school books, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I'm also, so I'm also wondering that, you know, if you are in a, if you are riffing off this morning, if you are in a Western culture or in, you know, Australia or you're in Hong Kong, that you actually need to know these performances because mm -hmm. you're not going to go, you know, if you front up and say, Mm -hmm. I'm so good. Tell me what you know. Tell me how I need to be better. Yeah, yeah. That's going to go down very poorly in in this world. So it's actually a form of. It's important to know as a form of almost slash cultural feedback. Yes. Really yeah. Yeah. So yeah. actually, I, I will share a very interesting uh, story uh, from my friends. You know, some some friends uh, kids uh, go to international schools. So. The education experience very matters. So they, they think uh, it's, it's not necessary to always show a modesty to others. You need to be confident, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, so this actually makes my friends struggle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it conflicts with the, the cultural values uh, she has. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so I, I definitely believe that the education experience yeah. very matters. Yeah. 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 Anastasia, did you have you, yes. you have the last yes. question? <laughs> okay, yeah, what the last question? Um, Jane, you mentioned in your presentation that so the cultural characteristics of Chinese students is that success is defined by diligence, by hard work. But so, did you notice in your uh, research whether it changes with some experiences, and if just hard work? doesn't work. So does it change the attitude, the perceptions of uh, feedback? So actually, I, I, I didn't ask my participants uh, this question, but yes, I totally agree with you. Uh, that sometimes we may have that such kind of feeling, hard work doesn't work. Um, you know, I also have uh, the communication with my daughter about hard work. So she also told me, why hard work doesn't work? Um, but I say to her, do you believe that? And she said, maybe someday hard work works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, yeah. I, I don't know how to explain this. This is a kind yeah. of... You're very wise. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so you know teachers, uh, you know teachers, especially uh, in the local teachers, the, the, uh, uh, local schools, the teachers emphasize the importance of hard work. Mm -hmm. um, if they have a chance, they will emphasize that. Okay, even you have such kind of feeling, you doubt that how work works, but maybe, you know, in turn you will convince yourself it really does work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't explain why. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for your interesting questions, and thank you, Jane, for your hard work. <laughs> um, and thank you, everyone online, for sticking around. Um, as I said, we hope to see you next time. So okay, thanks. and uh, I'd like to thank Traders uh, for these opportunities to share my findings with the international audience and with the Cradle members. Thank you very much. Thank you.